As Zimbabwe prepares to host the Southern African Development Community SADC Summit in Harare next week, a tense atmosphere hangs over the capital city. President Mnangagwa's government is facing mounting pressure from both within and outside the country. With the opposition Citizens Coalition for Change CCC vowing to stage mass protests during the summit, coinciding with the chilling pattern of disappearances and human rights violations. The CCC, previously led by Nelson Chamisa, has officially notified the police of their plans to hold protests on August 17, the day the SADC summit is scheduled to begin. In a letter dated August 8, addressed to the police officer commanding Harare District, CCC convener Vincent Taravinga indicated that they expect 10,000 protesters in Harare alone with up to 1,000 protesters planned in other districts across the country. The protests under the banner. Zimbabwe Let's Unite and Fix Our Country aimed to highlight the continued deterioration of human rights in Zimbabwe. The CCC activists intend to peacefully oppose increased human rights abuses, including the arrest and detention of pro-democracy activists and the denial of citizens' rights to assemble, as enshrined in the Zimbabwean constitution. The protests are planned to take place at Robert Mugabe Square in Harare and in various districts across the country. The government, however, has warned that it is prepared to crush any protests during the regional event. Despite this, CCC spokesperson Promise Kwananzi has stated that the activists have followed all legal requirements by notifying the police. Although they are not seeking permission, as the law only requires notification, while some police districts have acknowledged receiving the notifications, police spokesperson Commissioner Paul Nyathi claimed he was unaware of the notifications as they were handled at the district level. These protests come at a time when Harare is bracing for a heavy security presence as the government deploys soldiers in residential areas ahead of the summit. The deployment of heavily armed soldiers and motorized military gear has sent shockwaves through communities like Chitungwaza where residents are understandably apprehensive. There is limited loitering here. A resident at St. Mary's Shopping Center said, people are afraid of the soldiers. There is a lot of uncertainty, so people are staying indoors to be safe. This heightened security presence is particularly concerning given the recent wave of human rights abuses in Zimbabwe. Dozens of political and human rights activists are currently incarcerated highlighting the government's intensified efforts to suppress dissent. The latest incident involves the abduction of human rights campaigners Namatai Kwakweza, a recipient of the Kofi Annan Next Gen Democracy Prize in 2023, and Robson Sher of the Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union Ardas, along with two other activists. The four were seized by state security agents on July 31st while en route to a civil society event in Victoria Falls. They were held for eight hours, during which time Cher sustained serious injuries, according to the Law Society of Zimbabwe LSC. The Zimbabwean diaspora, angered by the lack of commitment from SADC leaders to address the disputed 2023 election results and the ongoing human rights abuses under Omingagwa's rule, have vowed to make their voices heard on a global scale. They see the handover of the SADC chairmanship to Mingagwa as a blatant legitimization of a regime they consider illegitimate and tyrannical. The Zimbabwean economic situation is nothing short of dire. Hyperinflation has eroded the value of the Zimbabwean dollar, leading to widespread poverty and unemployment. Basic goods are scarce. And many Zimbabweans struggle to afford necessities like food, fuel, and healthcare said Tenai Mapfumo, a Zimbabwean living in the United Kingdom. As Zimbabweans in the diaspora, we watch with a mixture of disbelief and dismay as our home country assumes the chairmanship of SADC. This move, which should symbolize progress and leadership within the region, instead highlights the ongoing mismanagement, human rights abuses, and economic missteps that have plagued Zimbabwe for decades. Pamela Maguizi, Another Zimbabwean living abroad echoes these sentiments, stating that Omingagwa is unfit to lead a credible regional grouping. The government's response to the multiple crises facing people back home has been inadequate at best, with economic policies that have failed to stabilize the currency or attract meaningful foreign investment. 
the government is keen to present a picture of stability and prosperity. Throwing money at sprucing up the capital city, Harare, and embarking on ambitious infrastructure projects. However, the reality on the ground paints a starkly different picture. The effects of the El Nino-induced drought have left over half of the population struggling with hunger, and the government's crackdown on dissent has intensified in recent months. The government's response to any hint of dissent has been swift and uncompromising. On June 16, police raided a private home in Harare, arresting over 70 people, most of them young. At a gathering to commemorate the Day of the African Child, the detainees were charged with participating in a gathering with the intent to promote violence, breaches of the peace, or bigotry, as well as disorderly conduct. Their lawyers maintain that the gathering was a barbecue bray at the home of James Timba, an opposition leader, and that the charges are politically motivated. Despite this, a Harare magistrate denied them bail, ruling that they were likely to commit similar offenses if released. The government's stance has been further reinforced by pronouncements from high-ranking officials. President Umingagwa himself has warned of rogue elements bent on instigating civil disorder and has assured the public that security agencies are on high alert to deal with them decisively. Home Affairs Minister Kazembi Kazembi has also issued a chilling warning to anyone planning unrest during the summit. If there is someone who is planning lawlessness during the SADC summit be warned that the security sector will deal with you accordingly. He said, The president said we should be peaceful and welcome our visitors cheerfully. We are tried and tested. Said Farai Marapira, ZANU PF Director of Information, in a thinly veiled threat to opposition parties planning protests. We are ready to deal with any subversiveness, decidedly. We are waiting for the signal.